it's the middle of the summer and you might want to travel the world, even though we are in the middle of a pandemic. If you want to travel the world, disregarding everything, have limited budget, limited time, and you want to go everywhere, I can show you a place that you can visit and be in two spots at the same time. You can be in Africa and Italy at the same time. You read the title, you saw the thumbnail. The country is Eritrea. And although it's located in Africa, it's almost unbelievable that this country contains one of the best colonial structures in the world. The country is equivalently to Italy in Africa. It has a mystery yet to be discovered by the world. The country has access to the Dalak Island, which contains untouched sea reefs in the Red Sea. It's rich in historical data with archaeological sites and artifacts. It's a great place for wonderful discoveries. The cultures remain intact, diverse, colorful, with nine ethnic groups that are interesting subjects for cultural immersion. Eritrea is one of the few countries that will become, in the following years, a world-renowned location. So, let's see what you can see. Soira is the highest point of Eritrea. It measures 3,018 feet high. Tigrinya is a member of the Ethiopic branch of Semitic languages with about 6 million speakers and it's the most largely spoken language in the Tigri region of Ethiopia and in central Eritrea. The Denkil depression is the lowest point in the country and is considered to be the world's hottest places. Tikazi river is the largest river in the country. Asmara is the capital of the country and it's called Italy's African city or New Rome due to the distinctive Italian touch it exudes. It has Italian buildings. According to Tigrian, the meaning of the capital of Eritrea, Zmera, means made the united. The country's language is called Narabana, meaning narrow talk, which derived from the word Nera means sky, heaven. So sky talk, heaven talk. After Egypt has the second highest archaeological historical discoveries in Africa, the number of sites in the country, which was 45,000 previously has now increased to close to 100,000 digging sites. Eritrea literally means red and gets its name after the Red Sea. Sinus Erythraeus was the name of the Greek settlers in Egypt of the Ptolemaic dynasty in the 3rd century BC that labeled the body of water between the Arab Peninsula and the African continent. By 1990, 40% of Eritrean freedom fighters were made up of women. The EPLF had a higher percentage of women than any other liberation army in the world. This is the only country in the world that set elections regularly scheduled, cancelled, scheduled again, never to happen. The country has no official language but has ten languages Arabic, English, Saho, Tigrinya, Hedreb, Tigre, Nara, Kunana, Afar, and Bilen. Due to the forbidding climate of the Dakak Islands, it's believed to have been derived from an Arabic word Dala, whose translation is the gates of hell. During the country's independence war, almost 4,000 Cuban army fighters fought alongside Ethiopia against Eritrea. There are at least 12 streets worldwide named after Eritrean cities such as Asmara Drive in Austin, Texas, Asmara in Las Vegas, or Asmara Way in Easton. The Red Sea is widening at the rate of about one half an inch per year, one centimeter, and will one day become an ocean. About 34 million years ago, the Red Sea began to open up. This rift is one of the youngest regions of continental breakup on Earth. There are 1,400 known fish species living in Eritrea's waters, and 17% of those fishes are found nowhere else on the planet. There are also 250 known coral species, in which 20% of those are found only in the Red Sea of Eritrea. Women fighting alongside their men have been recorded as far back as 1810, when the British explorer Nathaniel Pierce traveled to various areas of the Horn region, and I witnessed accounts of women going to battle alongside their men. Isaiah Safwerki has been Eritrea's only president since independence. To present, the national emblem of the country was adapted on the 24th May 1993 with the occasion of the declaration of independence from Ethiopia. The emblem mainly depicts a camel surrounded by a wreath of laurel. Ethiopia is the world's only country to allocate an entire coastline as a reserve. The Dalak group of islands is world-renowned for their pearl production and is largely uninhibited. The port city of Adulis is one of Africa's most ancient cities. The Greeks founded the city in 600 BC. Afar women living in Eritrea usually don't accept courtship from a man that hasn't killed another man. Afar's culture emphasizes a man's strength and bravery, plus the prestige that comes traditionally from killing one's enemy. In short, don't marry an Afar woman if you go to Eritrea. 
and fall in love. As part of Eritrea's culture, visiting among friends and families is commonly done without an invitation. You just pop in. In the early 1940s, the British wanted to turn Eritrea into a Jewish colony. Oh, the Brits. The primary purpose of creating a Jewish colony in the country was to divert Jewish immigration from Palestine and thereby relax tensions in the British dominion in Palestine itself. The country is the northeast African country on the Red Sea coast. It shares borders with Ethiopia, Sudan and Djibouti. How I said earlier, the country has no official language. By constitution, it's established that all languages in Eritrea are equal. However, the main languages spoken in the country are Standard Arabic, Tigre and Tigirinya. Eritrea's terrain is dominated by extension of Ethiopian north-south trending highlands, descending on the east to a coastal desert plain, or the northwest to hilly terrain, and on the southwest to flat rolling plains. The Church of Our Lady of the Rosary in Asmara is a Roman Catholic church, a big Lombard Romanesque church in the center of the city. It was built in 1923 to serve as the principal church of the Apostolic Vicariate of Eritrea. The Enda Mariam Orthodox Cathedral in Esmera was built in 1938 and is a blend of Italian and Eritrean architecture. The ancient monastery of Debre Bizen lies on top of Mount Bizen near the village of Nefest is the best known monastery of the Eritrean Orthodox the Wodo Church. It was founded in 1350 by Abba Philippos, who was a student of Abba Absadi. The Fiat Tagliero building in Asmar is a futuristic looking service station that was completed in 1938 and designed by the Italian engineer Giuseppe Petazzi. Eritrea was part of the first Ethiopian kingdom of Aksum until its decline in the 8th century. It came under the control of the Ottoman Empire in the 16th century and later under control of the Egyptians. The Italians captured the coastal areas in 1885 and the Treaty of Usiali gave Italy sovereignty over part of Eritrea. The Italians named their colony after the Roman name for the Red Sea, Mare Eritreum, and ruled there until World War II. The British captured Eritrea in 1941 and later administrated it as a UN trust territory until it became federated with Ethiopia in September 15, 1952. It was made a Ethiopian province in November 14, 1962, and finally in 1993, after World of Independence, that lasted nearly 30 years, Eritrea became a sovereign country. At Buya, Eritrea, you will find one of the oldest hominid representing a possible link between Homo erectus and Homo sapien. The site was found by Italian scientists. It's dated to over 1 million years, being the oldest skeleton we found of its kind. If you visited the country, please tell me in the doobly doo below. I sure hope to visit parts of Africa, including Eritrea, in the future when the gates open and we can travel again. It sounds like a nice country with a lot of things to see. It would be trippy to post a picture on Instagram with you in an Italian city only to pinpoint your location in Africa. That would be a cool thing to do. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. I'd like to thank those six new people that subscribe to the channel. I hope you like this video. I am Alex and until next time, beware of the falling apples.